tonight's true crime time, we have Robert Ben Rhodes, aka the Truck Stop Killer. And as you may know by now, these take me a very long time. So if you can like, comment, share, copy link, let me know if this is on your For You page. Anything to help me get views, I do appreciate you to the fullest extent of the law. Okay, Robert Benjamin Rhodes was born on November 22nd, 1945. Also known as the Truck Stop Killer, he is an American serial killer and rapist who was convicted for three murders and was slated to be tried for two more before charges were dropped due to the wishes of the victims' families. Rhodes is additionally suspected of torturing, raping, and killing more than 50 women between 1975 and 1990 based on data about his truck routes and women who went missing during those years and who met the profile of his preferred victims. At the time that he was caught, Rhodes claimed to have engaged in these activities for 15 years. Rhodes was born in Council Bluffs, Iowa in 1945, but it is uncertain exactly where he was raised. He was raised by his mother in the early years of his life as his father was a soldier in the United States Army and was stationed in West Germany. Rhodes was in elementary school when his father returned from duty overseas, but after his father was discharged from the military, he found work as a firefighter. By all reliable accounts, Rhodes' early life was relatively normal aside from unspecified social problems in his formative years. He was an active participant in extracurricular activities of his attended schools and involved himself with various sports and other programs, including gridiron football, wrestling, choir, and French club. In 1961, at the age of 16, he was arrested for tampering with a vehicle along with arrest for public fighting in 1962 at age 17, meaning that his criminal involvement did start in high school. After graduating from Thomas Jefferson High School in Council Bluffs in 1964, he joined the Marine Corps, and during the same year, his father was arrested for molesting a 12-year-old girl. His father subsequently committed suicide while awaiting trial. A few years later, in 67 or 68, Rhodes was dishonorably discharged from the military for his involvement in a robbery. After his dishonorable discharge from the Marines, sometime in the late 1960s, he attended college but dropped out. He later attempted to join a law enforcement agency but was rejected, likely for his past dishonorable discharge from the Marines. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, Rhodes married three times, having a son with his first wife, and subsequently he found work in stores, supermarkets, warehouses, and restaurants. Eventually, he became a long-haul trucker. During the 1980s, Rhodes developed interests and hobbies, amongst which included involving himself in the BDSM scene. It was also during this time that he allegedly verbally, physically, and sexually abused his third wife, Deborah Rhodes. Rhodes would prey on hitchhikers and truck stop sex workers starting in the 1970s. His first confirmed victims were Patricia Candace Walsh and her husband, Douglas Zykowski. This was in 1990, but it is that he began murdering and torturing people way before that. He immediately killed Zykowski after picking them up, but then he kept his wife, Walsh, for over a week. He tortured and raped her multiple times before dumping her body in Millard County, Utah. Her husband's body, however, had been dumped in Sutton County, Texas. 1994, Rose was convicted of first-degree murder of Regina K. Walters. The last photograph of her, which Rhodes took, has been floating around the internet for a long time and you've likely seen it before. For this, he was sentenced to life without parole at the Menard Correctional Center in Chester, Illinois, and was then extradited to Utah in 2005 to be tried for the deaths of Candace Walsh and Douglas Sikowski. Over in accordance with those two victims' family requests, the charges were dropped since he was already serving life in prison. Robert Ben Rhodes is unfortunately still alive today and continues to serve life without parole at the Maximum Security Menard Correctional Center in Chester, Illinois.